Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Open Stutter. My name is Samantha Wasslis, and I'm here with Daniel today to talk about stuttering in the workplace. Daniel, thanks for joining us. Very welcome. Good to be here. I love talking about stuttering. <laughs> Same right here. Um, tell us a little, let's start off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yep. So I am 34 years old. Um, I work as an accountant, uh, work in a, a small IT federal contractor company. Um, I went to the University of Maryland, um, actually studied political science, but uh, ended up in accounting, kind of the way it works sometimes. Um, and, um, you know, I've been stuttering my whole life, um, grew up stuttering, and, you know, I was a covert stutterer for um, the first part of my life through um, elementary school, middle school, high school, and I would say halfway through college. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of the brief synopsis. Awesome. Yeah, I remember meeting you at the University of Maryland Clinic where you were in uh, undergrad. So I've kind of followed your journey from undergrad to graduate school to a career. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about how stuttering has influenced your career or maybe any decisions you've made in your career. Yeah, so, you know, stuttering has definitely made an impact. And I think whether I've realized it or not, um, I think just the fact that I'm in accounting actually was partially influenced by stuttering. Um, I think more on a subconscious level. I never planned it out or, you know, thought that, hey, if I'm in accounting, I won't have to talk to people as much or I'll be left alone. But I think subconsciously that thought definitely was there. Um, so I think it definitely influenced me in that regard. And you know, just in terms of overall working, regardless of the job, it's definitely had an impact. Like I remember uh, coming out of undergrad when I first started working um, that I was terrified to go pick up the phone. I really avoided it at all costs. Um, I would send emails instead. I would, you know, d did everything I could to avoid it. And you know, it actually ended up making my job harder to do because one of the uh, first uh, things that I took on was, you know, just basically sending out bills to customers, processing payments. And so many of our customers pay by credit card. So they would just call over the phone and, you know, provide their credit card for payment. And, and they don't like to send it over email for obvious reasons. So it just made my job harder. So, you know, that was something I definitely worked on a lot. Um, yeah, I think a lot of our list, a lot of our listeners can relate to um, that fear of talking on the phone. Can you tell us a little bit about how you overcame that fear of talking on the phone and how is it for you now? Yeah, so for me, I had the motivation of I just basically had to speak on the phone to do my job. Like I said, like no one wants to send their credit card information over email. They want to do it over the phone. And that was just the only option. So you know, I think for me, what helped overcome it was, you know, one, having the motivation to do it and actually just being unable to escape. And two, just kind of taking it step by step. Like I remember what I would first do was try and take one phone call a day. That was my goal. Just take one. That's it. Just starting very small and then incrementally moving up from there, um, you know, and then you know, then it would be like, take five phone calls that day or so on and just moving up slowly but surely. And, you know, it was definitely difficult. Like I said, there was fear, but also what would happen when I would pick up the phone is that I would just block. Someone would say hello and I'd just be unable to get sound out, you know, um, just completely stuck. So what I did with that is that I would always make sure when I picked the phone to get out some sort of sound. Um, at first, I just started saying, um, hello, which is not natural and not ideal, but the goal was just to pick up the phone. That was really it. And you know, then from there it was, all right, well, I have to say some sound, otherwise people think I didn't pick up the phone and just hang up, you know? So mm -hmm. it just progressed from there. And it, you know, I would say it took about, two to three years before I was fully comfortable 
like picking up the phone without a second thought and you know and especially you know now i think that's definitely paid off and i find it's actually much easier to get things done now over the phone than sending emails so um yeah, yeah. it was just you know constant work staying at it and just incremental progress yeah I think was the key and just almost starting at like the smallest possible point you could. Like for me, that was just pick up one, one phone call a day. So that's really great advice. Starting somewhere, jumping in, um, even if it's not your end result of maybe getting out an entire message, you have to start with that fear. And some people experience even that fear of that phone ringing. That fear is so strong that it, it starts before that that phone call. So I love that advice of kind of picking a target, sticking with it and, and slowly building up that confidence. So that's wonderful. Um, are you open as a person who stutters at work right now? Tell us a little bit about that. Our channel is called Open Stutter. So tell us a little bit about your openness. Yeah, uh, great question. So I would say I'm, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say 80% open at work in terms of everyone around me in my department and who I manage, they all know I stutter. Um, some of them I've talked to about it. You know, I've talked to going to stuttering group. Um, I've actually mentioned, you know, going to the National Stuttering Association conference in July. You know, when we talk about summer plans, um, you know, and talk to uh, my boss about how, you know, I have stuttering group every Thursday. So I need to leave at six for the 6.30 group. Um, so I'd say I'm pretty open. I'd say that remaining 20% is the other people in the company who I don't interact with that much on a regular basis. You know, like mm -hmm. um, some of our service techs, um, I just don't really have a lot of in in interaction with them. So, um, and I've never spoken about starting with them. And I don't know if they know or don't know. Um, they probably do. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd say that's where I am right now. So pretty open in kind of my close uh, work group. But once we get beyond that, then I'm less open. That's wonderful. Yeah, 80% is a high number. Um, are you able to so you're it sounds like you're using you use advertising a lot, you talk about it, which is wonderful. Um, what about um, actually showing that stutter? Tell us describe a little bit about that journey at work with with showing that open stuttering. Um, that raw, vulnerable moment at work and maybe any sort of listener reactions or responses you've gotten from that? Yeah, well, it's an ongoing journey for sure. I would say I'm not fully open at work. I still use tricks sometimes. Um, but I would say in terms of the journey, it's just for me and showing open starting at work was definitely difficult um, for several reasons, you know, First is that in a professional setting, you know, you always need to come across as being competent. You don't want people to question that. And that was kind of my fear. If I showed stuttering, would people think that I'm nervous? Would people think I don't know what I'm talking about? So, and I think that was more of an internal fear really. Um, so that was something that I kind of had to get, had to get over and still kind of uh, battle with today. Um, and it's also, you know, each situation is different. Like, um, the fear of just showing your raw open stuttering, you know, it's interesting the thoughts that you, that come across my mind. Like, you know, when I'm, uh, speaking to people who report to me there, it's like, I feel like I have to convey like knowledge and confidence and kind of give them faith and like, you know, this is the right step to take here. This is the right direction. And, you know, then on the flip side, when I'm speaking to people above me there, it's, you know, trying to convince them of like, okay, this is how we should handle this situation. And here's why I think that's the best approach. So the fears differ in, in each situation, but it's always definitely there. Um, yeah. And that and power dynamic shifts <laughs> and the context shifts. So it, it changes that fear of stuttering and will willingness to open stutter in that moment. Yeah, definitely. Um, we talk a lot about stutter gain, um, things, advantages to stuttering in your mind. What are, what are some advantages of being a person who stutters or a stutterer in the workplace? 
maybe yes. an employer looking to hire someone who stutters or a person who stutters going out there in the, the job market? Yeah, I've definitely thought about this recently, you know, trying to look at positive aspects of stuttering, something, you know, in the past I didn't really think much about. Um, so what I've come to realize is, you know, when you open stutter and, you know, don't try and hide it, don't change words, put in filler words. Well, number one, it's much easier to understand someone who's just open stuttering rather than adding in interjections or other words or backing up like the whole sentence. So just from a communication point of view, you know, it's much easier to understand uh, people when they just open stutter because they're not going backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other and probably the main positive thing that I've seen is that you, I feel like you can build trust through stuttering. I think people pick up on when you're not comfortable with your stuttering, but on the flip side, if you are mostly comfortable with it, I think people pick up on that too. And it comes across as confidence, which, you know, is always great. And um, so you can definitely use it to convey confidence. And I think also to convey trust. Um, that's a big thing because when you're showing, show, showing your open stuttering, you are kind of being a little bit vulnerable as, as well. And I think that conveys to people, people naturally pick up on that. And Absolutely. so I think it just makes people build trust much faster that way. Um, that's helped me when like I'm training people and either I advertise on their first day, you know, it's kind of like sharing something personal about yourself, but I mean, you can't really hide it. So you may as well share it and just be open about it and just be confident about it. Um, yeah, it so, sounds like it, it helps create a relationship, an authentic relationship that you can connect with perhaps. And a lot of people who stutter, stutters report that it, it helps others share about themselves. So I can absolutely see how that is a trust builder in a workplace environment as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot of positive aspects to it. You know, when you hire someone and you're training them, you're trying to build a relationship with them, get them to be part of the team, you know, take on the team culture. And, you know, likewise, if you're, you know, talking to a customer and you want them to trust you that what you're saying is correct and this is actually what they should do and that this makes the most sense and has these benefits. So, yeah, it's a big part of the professional workspace. I think, you know, just, trusting who you're speaking with and uh, having confidence in yeah. them. All right, let's talk about the flip side. Are there any disadvantages for you of, of being a person who stutters or a stutterer in the workplace? Um, I would say less so now that I think I've become much more accepting, mm -hmm. but definitely when I first started, some of the disadvantages were that you know, when you're speaking to someone or giving a presentation or, you know, doing anything really, you kind of have, you know, you're thinking about two different things. You know, one is you're kind of thinking about your stuttering and two is you're thinking about the actual content of what you're speaking about. So that can be a little hard to juggle sometimes, but, you know, over the years, I've kind of learned to really not focus and just ignore almost thinking about the stuttering aspect. If I stutter, I stutter. If I don't, I don't. And solely focus on the content. But that definitely, you know, took practice and uh, lots of time to just forget about thinking, how am I speaking? And if I do have a block or a big open stutter, just keep going. You know, it's not a big deal, really. Um, so... Yeah. So maybe yeah, depending where you are in your journey, um, that mental load of that you carry around, if you're planning or thinking or um, anticipating, that can really take a toll on your content and how much resources you have available to do your job. So it sounds like you've been able to free up that those resources um, to focus on content, which is a great sign of success. Yeah. Yep. No, it's helped a lot. It's hard to have two things going parallel in your mind during a presentation and, you know, uh, looking at the audience, see if they're understanding what you're saying. It's just, it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Let's jump into interviewing. Cause I think that's a hot topic when it comes to jobs. Um, 
tell us a little bit about your experience interviewing, maybe things that have been helpful and, and or tips you would give someone who stutters who's going on interviews. Yeah, so I've done a fair amount of interviews over the years. I also, you know, managed the HR function. So I was in every interview. Um, don't even know if I could put a number on how many I've done over the years, but definitely I'd say like at least a hundred, if not more. Um, so yeah, it's definitely stressful. Um, and that kind of adds an extra element to it. You know, whenever you yourself are a little more stressed, it does make speaking harder. And that's true whether you stutter or not. <laughs> um, true. So I think a big part of what's helped me with interviews is, you know, just accepting the fact that you may stutter and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just really feeling okay with that, really accepting and, you know, just not dwelling on that aspect, focusing really solely on the content, getting your message across. And also, you know, there are times where I may have a big block or just may or I may be more disfluent that day and just not letting that get me down. Just saying, it's okay. Like, you know, my goal in the interview is to either, you know, come across and present all of my qualifications, or if I'm interviewing someone to try and find the best person for the job, because that's really important. So I just kind of focus on, you know, what's my objective here and um, don't let how I'm speaking or any stuttering or blocks really throw me off my game. So I think that's one thing. And like everything, um, practice plays a big part in it. I know, you know, the first, probably the first 10 in, in, interviews I gave um, where I was interviewing someone, you know, they were definitely harder, but like everything, you get more comfortable in it, more confident in it. You know, the same as people who don't stutter, really. Um, Great advice. Yeah. Get out there, do some throwaway interviews, just get experience, desensitize that experience of, of having to present yourself in an interview to reduce some of that fear. I love your message of accepting that you may stutter instead of fighting that urge, right? That, oh, well, fingers crossed, maybe I'll be fluent today. Leaning in, doing that opposite and really saying, I may be fluent, I may be disfluent. And both, op both outcomes are okay right now. Yep. And one thing I did and still do to this day is that if I am stuttering a lot and I feel like it may be confusing the listener, like they're just not sure what it is, because of course I'm kind of less frequent and more on the covert side, whereas when most people think of stuttering, they think of like a very high frequency pattern. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do if I have a big block or something that I feel like has confused the listener, I'll say, oh, like I'm stuttering a lot today. Like just put it out there. And I find that that helps a lot because, you know, I don't want the listener to be distracted trying to figure out what's going on. I want them to focus on my content. So I've used that also, you know, if I just happen to have a big block or, you know, they're confused because I completely stopped talking at a weird point in the sentence. Um, I just like to throw that out there. Um, I generally yeah. don't advertise at the start of interviews. I either like to just do it by just showing some stuttering or like I said, if I'm using a lot of tricks that day or have a particularly, you know, big block of some sort, then I just throw it out there like, oh, stuttering a lot today, you know, just mm -hmm. and it just I feel like one gives me permission to stutter, which is kind of contradictory in that then I often stutter less. Of course. And it's just, um, you know, and just lets the listener know what's going on so that they can focus on my content, not, you know, about uh, not on my stuttering. Yeah, I love it. Just acknowledge it and move on, right? Just a, yeah. a quick acknowledge. Great. Um, how, what, you know, thinking ahead to your future and your career, what are your goals and how does stuttering weave into those future career goals? Where do you see yourself going and, and does stuttering factor into your decisions right now? Yeah, I would say right now stuttering does not factor in. Um, it's not something that I take into account, um, or think about maybe on a subconscious level, I may a little bit, but it's hard to know that for sure, but definitely on a conscious level, 
it's not something I ever think about when, you know, thinking about my career or, you know, the next five years. Um, and, you know, as I look towards the future, I think it's a little bit ironic that I think, I, I do think subconsciously coming out of school, I did pick accounting. Well, one, cause I'm just very analytical and kind of see the world through numbers. But two, I think there was a subconscious aspect where I thought I may be able to not have to speak as much in accounting. And, you know, throughout the years, as I moved up, I've learned that one, I don't really think there's any job where you don't have to communicate with people. Everything is people to people, but even more so in accounting that like more so I'm giving more and more presentations, having to, you know, talk to, you know, give presentation to the CEO, talk to the CEO, you know, just there's a lot more communicating of ideas as you kind of move up, um, you know, and just interacting with, uh, you know, like the other accounting companies, vendors, customers, um, all of those sorts of things. So, you know, I think as I progress in my career, there's just going to be more and more speaking. Um, so I'm definitely thinking about that and thinking, you know, purely uh, putting stuttering aside, just also thinking, you know, how can I become a better communicator? You know, I was in uh, Toastmasters for a while and I'm, you know, considering going back to that just to improve my communication overall. That's um, great because yeah, aside from stuttering, there's lots of elements and aspects of communication that sometimes get um, unpracticed for a little bit if you have a profile of being covert and not communicating. So I think that that's wonderful that you're pursuing communication as a holistic um, idea, not just based on stuttering. Great. Um, let's, let's rewind a little bit. Um, previous Daniel, when you were covert, so for some of our listeners maybe who haven't kind of gone through this journey of transformation and acceptance and openness, what was it like for you thinking about your future career? Did you have any thoughts about finding a job or how did stuttering impact your, your thoughts about the future back then? Yeah, so it had a really big impact. Like I remember, you know, finishing my undergrad, going to job interviews, and just really being concerned about like, how am I coming across or really just worrying that if I had any stutter, they would view me as incompetent and just instantly pass me over. Um, that was definitely difficult. And I would say it was more of an internal struggle. You know, I didn't get any listener reactions, but of course you never know. Um, mm -hmm. So that was definitely difficult. I think, yeah, it's just mostly dealing with the internal doubt and just being very hard on myself. And, you know, stuttering is something where like the more you try and avoid it, the stronger it becomes um, and vice versa as well. <laughs> um, so that was definitely difficult. And, you know, like I talked about the phone and, you know, as I grew in my career, just realizing that like, there's gonna be a lot of speaking involved, a lot of communicating involved, and it's an important part of the job. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that was, I think at first concerning to me, but it kind of went in parallel with my stuttering journey so far of acceptance and, you know, viewing that as a positive thing. It's a chance to work on my stuttering, work on my communication. And it's actually a good opportunity, you know, because if I never spoke to anyone that I never get the chance to open stutter and to, you know, just be true to who I am. Yeah. And I think I like your perspective on communication is going to be a part of any job. So you might as well pick the job you want to do and have a fulfilling life because, um, you know, Many times people are are trying to find that job, that engineer job or that IT job. And what we learn is that you have to communicate in any job. So choose the job you love, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Great. definitely do not pick a job because of stuttering and trying to avoid speaking or, yeah. Awesome, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Any final words for our listeners or thoughts about stuttering in the workplace that you didn't get to touch on yet? Yeah, I think the 
overall message, just that it's okay to stutter in the workplace. It doesn't mean you're not competent. It doesn't mean you're nervous. You know, it doesn't detract from your message. I think as long as you're just true to yourself and kind and, you know, just accept it, I think that actually turns into a positive thing like we touched on before. But um, I think that's the most important thing. Just, you know, not viewing stuttering as something that reflects upon you. Great advice. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. All right.